Hi guys! Ayan, welcome sa ating lesson today. Ako, si Maria Merlinda, isang licensed professional teacher at inyong mayora na mamimigay ng ayuda sa pamamagitan ng pagtuturo ng matematika. In this video, we will be discussing the last operation on radicals which is division. So kung hindi niyo pa nakikita yung ibang videos na ginawa ko about the different operations on radicals, ilalagay ko na lang yung link dito sa upper right corner ng video na ito. And so, without further ado, let's get this lesson started! To start, we have to simplify the following without using your calculators. And then afterwards, try look for patterns or observe how these radicals are simplified. And from your observation, do not in bobo in yung rule kung paano ba mag-divide ng radicals. So let's start. Number one, meron tayong square root of 100 and divided by square root of 4. Tapos, may kapair siya na square root of 25. Yung square root of 144 divided by square root of 9 ay kapair ng square root of 16. And finally, the cube root of 216 divided by the cube root of 8, ang kapair niya ay the cube root of 27. Now, pause this video and try simplifying and answer these radicals. Afterwards, let's compare kung tama yung naging sagot nyo dun sa sagot sa bawat radicals na ito. So before actually solving it, tingnan muna natin kung ano yung pagkakapare-pareho ng bawat pair ng radicals. Each pair of radicals have the same index. Tama, kasi yung number 1, yung first pair na square root of 100 divided by square root of 4 tsaka square root of 25, lahat sila square root. As well as number 2, lahat square root. Tapos sa number 3, lahat din sila cube root. Another similarity among them is that they all arrive at the same answer. Itong pair na to, pareho yung sagot, as well as this one, as well as the third one. Pakita natin yung solution. Alam natin na yung 104, pwede silang masimplify as 10 and 2. When you divide 10 and 2, you have 5. However, the square root of this radical is also 5. Ito yung sinasabi na each pair has the same answer. Dito naman sa pangalawa, square root of 144 is 12, tapos ang square root of 9 is 3. Kapag dinivide mo tong dalawang ito, you have 4, which is also the square root of 16. And finally, Getting the cube root of 216 and the cube root of 8, we have 6 and 2. Divide them, you get 3. At itong huling radical na ito, the cube root of 27 is also 3. So what do you notice among the radicals given? May rule tayo na mabubuo kapag inobserve natin ang bawat isang pair of examples na ito. Out of this example, we can actually get the rule, which is the radicals should have the same index para ma-divide natin sila. Kung mapapansin nyo, yan yung isa sa mga pagkakapare-pareho ng lahat ng examples 1, to 3. Each of the pair have the same index. Kung square root itong isa, yung nasa denominator niya, square root din. Tapos, yung kabilang radical na kapair niya, square root din. Aside from this, notice also the radicand. 100, 4, and 25. Ano kaya yung pwedeng gawin sa 100 at 4 para maging 25? Sige nga, isipin. 104 can be divided to each other. 100 divided by 4, you get 25. Let's use that same observation sa pangalawang pair ng radicals. 
try nyo nga i-divide 144 divided by 9. I'm sure the answer there is 16. And finally, when you have 216 and then you divide it by 8, ang answer din dyan ay 27. So, kailangan natin itong mga na-discover or na-observe natin dito sa slide na ito para makapag-proceed sa mismong lesson ng division of radicals. But before actually dividing, we have to recall a few concepts. First, quotient rule of exponents. May rule tayo ng exponents wherein kapag meron kang m at n na natural numbers and then you have this x which is not equal to zero, then kung ang m at n ang magiging exponent tapos mas malaki tong m kaysa sa n, ima-minus natin yung exponent na n from m. So in other words, itong x to the n na to ay aakyat pataas, tapos mama-minus yung exponent niya. Tapos wala nang matitira sa denominator. And then, kung meron naman tayong case na mas malaki naman yung n kaysa m, baligtad naman ang mangyayari. Yung m naman yung mag adjust pababa. 1 over x to the n minus m. So, tandaan sa rule of exponent na ito, when we are doing the quotient rule of exponent, laging ang mag a ay yung mas maliit na exponent. Dapat, ang maiwan or magstay ay yung laging mas mataas na exponent, regardless kung nasaan siya. Kung nasa numerator yung mas mataas na exponent, mag a yung denominator. Kapag yung denominator, nasa kanya yung mas mataas na exponent, yung numerator yung mag a pababa. At laging minus yung operation sa pagitan ng dalawang exponents na to. Another one, we also have to recall this property of radicals wherein if we have the nth root of a divided by the nth root of b, it can be rewritten as the nth root of a divided by b. So, ang ibig sabihin itong radical na ito, kapag meron tayong dalawang dinidivide na radical, tapos same sila ng index, pwede nating pagsamahin sila sa loob ng isang radical sign. As long as pareho sila ng index. Such that a, yung numerator, dapat ay 0 or above yung value. And then yung b, b should always be greater than 0. So, kailangan natin itong dalawang concept na ito para maintindihan ang division of radicals. So, here are the steps. Just like before, lahat ng steps ay ilalagay ko sa left, tapos yung example ay nasa right. Let's start. Rewrite the given radical under a single radical symbol. So, for this example, we have the square root of 44, a to the 3rd, b to the 7, divided by the square root of 99, a to the 5th, b to the 5th. Kailangan nga pala muna i-check natin kung pareho sila ng index. Kasi kapag hindi sila pareho ng index, hindi na sila pwedeng i-divide. In this case, sa example 1, since pareho naman silang square root, pwede natin silang i-rewrite under one single radical sign or under one single square root. Katulad ng property na nabanggit natin kanina. Simplify the radicand using division for numerical coefficient and quotient rule of exponents for literal coefficient. So, kailangan daw natin i-simplify itong fraction sa loob in such a way na dapat yung mga coefficient ng mga variable, kailangan division ang gamitin nating pan-simplify kasi nga, division ito. Tapos, dito naman sa mga literal coefficient sa mga variable, pag susubtract natin yung exponent nila using the quotient rule na nirecall natin kanina. 44 and 99. Both of them can be divided by a GCF of 11. At kapag dinivide natin itong 44 sa 11, may iiwan na lang ang 4. Yung 99 kapag dinivide sa 11, 9 na lang. And use the quotient rule of exponents para sa mga literal coefficient. Let's start with A. Kung mapapansin nyo, yung A, mas mataas yung exponent niya sa denominator. Kaya dapat yung a maiwan sa denominator. Tapos itong a to the third, bababa, masusubtract yung exponent niya kasi mas maliit yung 3. So pagbaba ng 3 dito, magiging 5 minus 3 na lang siya. Ganon din ang gawin natin sa b. 
Kaso, dito sa B, mas mataas yung nasa numerator. Kaya may iwan yung B to the 7 sa numerator. Itong minus 5, galing ito sa denominator ng B sa baba na umakyat. Gamit yung quotient rule of exponents. By the way, ang quotient rule of exponents gumagana lang kapag pareho ng base. A sa A, B sa B. Hindi mo pwedeng ipag-quotient rule ang A sa B or B sa A. Quotient rule should always work if the given have same bases. Yan. So dito, naging ganito na yung next step natin. Nagbaba at nagtaas na tayo ng exponent using the quotient rule. And then, 7 minus 5, we know that is 2. 5 minus 3, we know that is also 2. So, yung 4 at 9, hindi na natin sila madi-divide. So, simplified na yan. Tapos, itong b squared at a squared, hindi na natin sila maka-quotient rule kasi nga, magkaiba na yung base nila. So, with that being said, nagawa na natin itong step 2. We now proceed to step 3. Write the numerator and denominator as separate radicals. Ibig sabihin ng step 3, kung hindi mo na naman sila masisimplify, hindi ka na makakapag-divide or hindi ka na makakapag-quotient rule, oras na para maghiwalay. Kasi kapag wala nang magagawa, kailangan ng maghiwalay. Yung radicals. Radicals ang pinag-uusapan natin dito, ha? Radicals. Radicals kasi yung tinuturo ko, di ba? Radicals. Mm -hmm. So, ayun. Paghihiwalayin na natin yung radicals. Isang radical sa numerator at isang radical sa denominator. Simplify. Number 4 should be emphasized. Kasi meron ditong rule na nagsasabi that the denominator should not have radicals in it. Kailangan, kapag nag-simplify tayo sa step na to, yung denominator, laging matatanggalan ng square root, laging matatanggalan ng cube root, kailangan term lang siya, extracted root lang siya. Wala siyang radical. Sa case nito, example number 1, alam natin na yung numerator, meron yang square root, yung 4. Tapos yung b squared, pwede din natin kuha na ng square root. As well as the denominator, we have 9 and a squared. So, doing that step, simplifying the entire radicals, we will arrive with 2b, yung 2 galing sa square root ng 4, yung b galing sa square root ng b squared. Tapos, itong 3a as your denominator, yung 3 square root ng 9, yung a squared, kuha na ng square root, you get a. So, dahil wala ka nang masisimplify pa dito, wala ka nang pwedeng ma-divide, wala ka nang pwedeng magamitan ng quotient rule, obviously, wala kang i-add, walang i-minus, walang i-multiply, this is your final answer. Let's have example 2. We write the given under one single radical. So, again, pareho silang square root. We can use the property wherein pwede natin silang pag-isahin ng square root. And then, simplify the radicand. I-divide natin yung coefficient. Pwede ba silang pag-dividean ng isang GCF? What's the GCF of 3 and 12? You may pause this video and think. 3 and 12 are both divisible by 3. Kapag dinivide natin yung 3 sa 3, that will just be 1. Tapos, yung 12, kapag dinivide natin sa 3, that will just be 4. Yung y dito, dahil pareho naman yung exponent nila na 1, we can just divide them out. Hindi na natin sila isusulat. Eliminated na sila kumbaga. Ang may iwan na lang ay yung variable x sa numerator. Dahil walang variable x sa denominator, wala tayong gagamitan ng quotient rule. So, ganyan na yan. Hindi natin masisimplify further kasi hindi na naman natin madidivide yung variable by a certain number 4. So, the next step here is to separate them. Dahil wala nang magagawa, kailangan nang maghiwalay. Ah, oh, naghiwalay na sila. Okay lang yan. Kailangan yan para masimplify. Itong 4, meron tong square root which is 2. Kaya naging 2 yung denominator dito. Also, square root of x over 2 follows the fourth step wherein the denominator has no radicals left in it. This is already your final answer for number 2. 
And finally, for example, number three, both of them are cube root. We can perform division between them. So cube root of this fraction. And then, so we can actually simplify 48 divided by 6 is 8. 6 divided by 6 is 1. However, itong y, pwede natin silang gamitan ng quotient rule. Yung y sa taas, maiiwan dahil mas mataas yung exponent niya. Tapos, itong y sa baba, aakyat. 3 minus 1, we have 2. Kaya 2 lang yung exponent ng y dito sa numerator. Ayan, paghihiwalay na naman sila. And then, itong cube root of 8y squared, baka pwede pa natin itong makuha na ng cube root, baka pwede pa nating masimplify as well as this denominator, cube root of 1. Itong 8, meron tong cube root, which is 2, pwedeng lumabas. Pero itong y squared, dahil mas maliit na yung exponent ng y, kaysa sa index, may iwan na yung y sa loob. However, itong cube root of 1, meron din tong cube root, which is 1. Yan, ganyan. Tapos, yung denominator na 1, since 1 na lang naman yung denominator, we can actually eliminate that. We will be left by 2 cube root of y squared. Kung mapapansin nyo, pwedeng magkaroon ng square root or ng cube root or ng kahit anong radical basta nasa numerator. Walang kaso pag numerator ang may radical. Nagkakaroon tayo ng problema kapag yung radical ay naiwan sa denominator. Kasi hindi pa simplified ang isang radical kapag meron pa siyang radical sa denominator. In this case, from examples 1 hanggang 3, lahat ng denominator natin na e-extract natin ng square root or ng cube root. The question is, paano pag hindi na? Paano pag kahit anong gawin natin, wala talagang exact root yung denominator? Hindi talaga natin makuha na ng square root yung denominator. What's next? That will be the focus of our next video. Pero tapusin muna natin tong example number 3, okay? So make sure that simplified na to. Mukhang wala na namang masisimplify dito. Therefore, we can say that this is already your final answer. So that's it. Tulad ng sabi ko kanina, in the next video, i-discuss naman natin kung paano tayo mag-divide at magsisimplify ng radicals kung yung denominator may radical pa rin hanggang dulo. Paano gagawin natin doon? So make sure you hit the notification bell to get real-time updates para updated kayo kung kailan ulit magbibigay ng ayuda about that lesson. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.